Hey guys, it's Kamiguno, and today I am doing a review for The Amazing Spider-Man. I'm not going to try to compare um, the trilogy with this movie in this review. I'm going to try doing that with the topic video I'll be doing this weekend, which will just be comparing all Amazing Spider-Man with the trilogy of, you know, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And I'm not going to reveal any spoilers in this, uh, in this movie review, so don't worry. If you haven't seen the movie, I won't spoil anything. Um, let's talk about what this whole story was about really is Peter's um, origins. It's Peter really being kind of an outsider. Really, you don't really see the nerdiness of him in this. It just shows that he's an outsider. We could see like Flash, you know, picking on him. We get to see, you know, he is an orphan that was taken by his aunt and uncle. Um, we get to see that relationship with his aunt and uncle. And we get really seeing him become Spider-Man and really a different journey than Tobey Maguire's. Um, Spider-Man, um, like he, in this movie, you get to see him more of a science nerd, I would say. There's, even he has a lock on his door, and he has a button to push the lock on his door. So you can see with the web shooters also, um, in the original Spider-Man movie, I know I'm kind of comparing a little, but with the original Spider-Man movie is more of an organic webbing, but in this one he had web shooters. So you get to see in this that Spider-Man in... Peter Parker is more of a scientist, where we get to see that in the comic books a little bit more also. Um, also, this is taking a little bit of Ultimate Universe spin also. Um, you could really see that with, um, uh, not really, I would say the parents, because we don't, we get to see the parents a lot in Ultimate Universe. I think they're going the direction of the Ultimate Universe with the parents' story. Um, this is not a spoiler, because it didn't happen in the movie, but in the comic books, um, Peter's dad is still alive. So they kind of, he doesn't go on the plane, but he doesn't say that he's alive. So my guess in the second movie, they will take that, they'll take the parent story a little bit more and we'll find out what happened to the father because the Easter egg, in the end, I won't say exactly what happened, but an Easter egg, it kind of leads to show that the next movie has to do something with the father. So um, I like that. Uh, the one problem I had with this movie that was a big problem for me was that Uncle Ben, like the relationship Peter had with him. Um, I felt like it was more believable, the relationship uh, in the trilogy. It's just more of that relationship with great power comes great responsibility. It, it showed that really Spider-Man, because of Uncle Ben's death, Peter Parker became Spider-Man, or at least has his responsibility with great power comes great responsibility. They didn't even mention that line in the movie. Um, also, it felt like, I didn't feel like their connection. I didn't feel, I did feel sad. I did, I did feel sad. And you felt like a little connection, but compared to Spider-Man and the, the Spider-Man trilogy with Tobey Maguire, I didn't feel that connection. And also, there's one story where Peter is looking for, um, you know, Uncle Ben's, uh, killer. And I love how they did it very differently. Again, I won't spoil, but they do do Ben Parker's death differently from the trilogy, which I loved. And I think they did a really great job with it because it just shows what pretty much what the story was, you know, what Peter went through, but in a whole different way. Um, they showed the death in a different way and it showed that Peter did let the killer go. Um, but in this movie, we get to see, um, you know, Spider-Man becomes Spider-Man because of um, the murder, because of um, Uncle Ben's murder. Really what happens in the trilogy also and in the comic books. But in the middle, he just gives up. Not even giving up. He just doesn't look for the killer of Uncle Ben anymore. It's more of, oh, saving people because of Cap Stacy saying that, oh, it's he should be saving people, not really... Um, getting into the police's business. Actually, he shouldn't be doing anything at all. But it gives Peter the motive of saving people more. But then he still doesn't look for Uncle Ben's killer, which I feel like they just kind of made it a plot hole because they didn't even concentrate it. They didn't really, you know, conclude that. And I thought that was very weird that they didn't conclude um, Uncle Ben's death. And I feel like it didn't have much of an impact on um, Peter. And I feel like that really is the most important thing with Peter was his relationship with Uncle Ben. And I feel like they... He was sad for that moment, but he didn't really, like, say, you know, this is because of Uncle Ben. I have to do this because of Uncle Ben. And they didn't really mention that in this movie. And I was kind of disappointed with that. 
but there was also great stuff. I thought Lizard, the Lizard was a really good villain. Um, the CGI, maybe when he was talking, wasn't the greatest, but um, I thought it was he was a very good villain. He was different, and I think it also leads this movie that Norman Osborn might be the next villain, and that's, of course, going to be a big thing with Gwen Stacy. Um, the relationship, the chemistry with Andrew Garfield and um, Emma Stone, I thought was great. And really, Andrew Garfield did do a great job in this movie. I thought he did a really good job. Um, he is more of a jokester. Spider-Man, I love that they went that direction, and the science nerd, loner kind of direction. Um, I love that he brought something different to uh, Spider-Man, and brought something different to the table for Spider-Man. Because Tobey Maguire, again, he was more the geeky person, he was more of, oh, this is my responsibility type of person. But with Andrew Garfield, he was more of the jokester. And you could see that these two actors bring something different to Spider-Man's character, and that's what we needed for the reboot, and I love that he did that. I think he was perfect Spider-Man, he was believable as Spider-Man, which was very important to me, and he's a good actor. It's same for Emma Stone. Emma Stone is one of my favorite actresses. Uh, I was very glad to see her play Gwen Stacy, and she definitely delivered. I know people were worried about that she wasn't going to, but she looks like Gwen Stacy, and she, she acts like Gwen Stacy. You know, if she was in a movie, that's what she did. She did a really good job with that. Um, and their relationship was really, really good. And didn't seem like... One thing I really was scared of is, like, they're going to, like, fall in love right away. But it really did show, like, a high school relationship. It, it was... They didn't, like, love each other. But you could see that that spark was um, starting, you know? And I love that. I love that thing to say, oh, I love you, you know, I'll die for you. No, it was just, like, that spark, you know, that... It, it, a start of a relationship. And in the end, there's something that... Um, shows that maybe that this relationship will continue in the next movie. Um, but really, I did really like this movie. I thought, again, it brought some different stuff to the table. The science portion of this, I really liked. Um, the lizard, I thought he was pretty good villain. Um, and I love that. I think really, after you see this movie, after all the movies combined, how many movies they're going to have, I think they're definitely having a sequel. But um, with all these movies combined, you see them back to back, I think that's when you're really going to see how this movie is good. Because I think with the father, I think he's definitely coming to the next movie. And for for me, you guys know I'm a big Spider-Man fan, and I think this movie did deliver. I mean, there were some problems with the death with Uncle Ben, the connection. Again, I love the trilogies, Uncle Ben and Aunt May story a little bit more. But um, I still thought this was a really good movie. I think Andrew Garfield did a good job. Um... It met my expectations. I don't think it was the best, best movie in the world, but um, I did love it. I did love it, and um, it's definitely one of my favorites. I would say it's definitely one of my favorite movies. Again, how do I compare it to the Spider-Man trilogy in this? That's the hard part. They're both very good movies and very different, but that's what I like about it, and that's what a reboot should do. It shouldn't be just retelling a story with different actors. It should bring something different to the table, and that's exactly what it did do. Um, also, in this movie, you get to see maybe a little Spider-Girl reference. It, I don't think it was on purpose, but um, I was actually mentioned on Spider-Girl boards um, that was mentioned that um, in this little scene, I actually think the clip came out, you know, before the movie came out, but um, Peter is doing basketball, um, tricking, actually I have to mention something about Flash Thompson also, but um, he's tricking Flash Thompson, and he, um, in the end, he breaks the whole entire basketball hoop just like May does. So definitely, I don't think that was a reference, but it kind of could be a reference. But uh, definitely that happens exactly. That's how May finds out that she has her powers. So hopefully that was a reference. That was very smart. Um, let's talk about Flash Thompson also. I forgot to mention about him. I was actually very impressed by his character in this. Um, just because it shows that he was the bully in the beginning of this. It shows that he's more of a character in this because he... He does change when he finds out that Peter's uncle dies. He's like, you know, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry, you know. I... He tries to be a friend to Peter, not a best friend, but tries to be comforting him. And that shows maybe, even in the end of the movie, we get to see he's like, oh, you know, you're not that bad guy, whatever. Um, but it shows that they could be friends, which we do see after they graduate high school. You know, they are good friends. So I definitely liked that they did show that a little bit and show a little bit of Flash Thompson's character which um, could definitely lead to maybe really far in the future showing his Venom um, character. That could be awesome if they really do develop his character enough. Um, but I thought, I like that they added him a lot. Again, I thought the characters were really um, well. I think they worked well in this um, movie, except Aunt May and Uncle Ben. I thought it was a little bit better in the Spider-Man trilogy. But again, Gwen Stacy worked well. 
Peter worked well, Flash worked well, Lizard worked well, and I give this four stars. I thought it was a solid movie, I really liked it, and um, maybe four, it's really between four and four and a half. Uh, stars. It's really between there. But I really love this movie, but I want to give it a solid grade, so I would say four or four and a half. I really can't decide. But I really did like this movie. I'd say go see it. And um, this is Kamikuno. Hope you guys enjoyed.